Hi, I'm Pat Gunn, and this is a, another episode of my blog. Looks like I'm not really keeping these, I'm not recording these as regularly as I thought I would be. Uh, part of this was just getting used to a new job, and I, I started recording them initially when I was between jobs, and I suddenly found myself with a lot of time on my hands, and uh, blogging seemed like a good way to do that. Um, and now that I'm employed again, I'm fairly frequently tired on Fridays uh, when I make it home. Whereas it used to be that I wasn't actually doing a lot on Friday, at least nothing particularly different from other days. I might try and do this a little bit more often, maybe not uh, super often. Uh, not as uh, I'm not sure if I'll ever hit a regular schedule like some of the uh, bloggers that I, I read. Also, just, um, I guess the, the word vlog isn't really that great of a word, but um, I sometimes find it frustrating to to use media in this form because I, I like to read. I'm a very fast reader, and it's a lot easier to scan over a set of paragraphs to find the stuff that you're really interested in. Whereas if you're looking at uh, if you're looking at a video, typically we don't have an organizational structure, a timeline, or something like that alongside. Maybe it would be nice for us to find a way to organize videos that way. Not sure. Maybe I've already talked about this at some point. Maybe not. Um, but it would just be—it would be great to be able to scan this this kind of thing. This is an idea that I was playing with when I was first starting to design a programming language that I've been working on for a while uh, for blind people. And the chief innovation there is that instead of using words, the programming language would be in the form of music, or at least in the form of notes. And because we were used to working with with notes, with thinking of music uh, as as being just like a sequence of, of tones and things like that. You can zoom in and out for music. You can navigate it almost as well as you can a set of paragraphs with your eyes. And so by using, by organizing your programming that way, people would have to learn like which notes have certain function uh, in terms of the structure of a program, but you would be able to make up for the loss of the ability to visually scan for things by representing uh, control flow and the, the contents of a program as music. Anyhow, that that program, uh, I don't remember if I've put that stuff online. I might have. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just it's been something I've been thinking about for a while and working on for a while. Uh, it would be great for us to figure out at some point how to do that for video. Anyhow, there are a few things that I, I thought would be interesting uh, to talk about. Uh, first, uh, I, I do have a, uh, a new job. Um, I'm working at a database company in New York City. It's fun. It's interesting. Uh, a lot of smart people around me. A lot of interesting infrastructure challenges. Uh, I am working in a much more sysadmin role than I'm used to. Maybe a little bit more than I'd like to be. Uh, not, not that I mind sysadmin, but I'm general. I'm used to mixing it with some development stuff, and this is a role that's more segregated from development. Um, but still, it's it's a good job. Uh, I'm enjoying it. It's working uh, so far a lot better than the last job was, which was endlessly frustrating. Um, uh, earlier uh, last week, I got uh, Disgaea 4 for the PS Vita, which is so far turning out to be a great game. Um, it's it's a little little bit different than Disgaea Three, but it's it's not that different. Um, there are new concepts to figure out, and maybe it's good that I haven't really gotten comfortable with them yet because they're different, and I I don't really want to keep on buying the same game and playing it the same way all the time. Um, so it's it's nice and deep, and I'm still figuring it out. But it's it's similar enough to the earlier Disgaea games that it's not particularly alien to me, and that makes it good for playing on the subway, or just playing late at night when I'm kind of tired. Since normally I haven't been doing a lot of video gaming when I've been fully awake and uh, and all that. There's another game that I've been playing called uh, The Witcher 2, which is okay, but it's not really an open world type game and. Ever since really getting used to Fallout and um, and the Elder Scrolls games, uh, I'm a little bit impatient with games that where I feel like I'm 
I'm walking down a very narrow corridor where I can see things that are fantastic outside, but I can't really move particularly freely. I want to be able to move freely. And I, I found, I recently played a game called Kingdom of Amalur, which was a fantastic game for theme, but it wasn't really very open world. Uh, and, I mean, again, it's not that these games are, you're completely locked in, but it's just the landscape isn't designed for you to navigate it freely. And if you're working on a quest, typically you're not navigating particularly freely. You really feel hemmed in. So, decent game, but I just I've moved on to, to wanting more mobility. Um, so that's pretty much what's been going on for me in gaming. There, there, there is a game called Metro 2034, I think, which is set in a post-apocalyptic uh, version of the Russian subway system. And uh, there, it, there's actually a remake of that uh, coming out. They've ported these games, which were pretty successful, onto more modern gaming engines. And I pre-ordered those on Steam. As soon as they show up, I'm looking forward to playing them. Uh, but I'm gonna wait. Uh, wait for that. Um, I'm gonna have to wait for that. I didn't order the original games. Um, so I recently got into a conversation with somebody about Russia and Russia and Syria, and contrasting uh, the. Oh, excuse me, I might sneeze. <coughs> um, contrasting the the rebels in in uh, Ukraine versus the rebels in Syria. And I was asked why I uh, generally, at least initially, supported the, the rebels in Syria and, and opposed the rebels in, in Ukraine. And the reason there is primarily that I think I don't have a very strong opinion when it comes to separatist movements in general. And uh, that that seems to operate on the level of power politics. They succeed or they don't, and any additional concerns that might come into it, you largely judge it after the fact. So I don't really find it particularly morally significant uh, what's, uh, like what sides we should take in those conflicts. But I do find it morally significant when you have a larger power uh, lurking over a much uh, smaller power and funding rebels. Uh, so if, if the rebels in eastern U Ukraine were just aiming for outright independence. They weren't trying to join Russia. They weren't funded by Russia. They weren't trained by Russia. There, there was no Russian involvement. Then I just wouldn't care. Uh, I am bothered by the notion of very large nations, very large and powerful nations, uh, having excessive control over the affairs of their neighbors. And so I view uh, the the efforts by the uh, by the rebels in the Ukraine to break away from Ukraine and join Russia to be highly suspect there. Even if there weren't the concerns about them not actually enjoying majority support, uh, and, and that particularly with the Russian occupation of Crimea, uh, Russia uh, held sham elections that were um, largely manipulated and not generally believed to represent the will of the Crimeans. Uh, it's not that I think that the Crimeans should have a particular ability to break away by holding an own in, uh, a vote internal to the region to begin with, but it was even more of a sham than, than the pretended legitimacy uh, as, as pushed by Russia would suggest. You, elections of that sort are inherently uh, illegitimate but Russia also went through the trouble of faking them. But uh, th all this contract, uh, contrasts with the situation, at least in the er uh, early days of the Syrian revolution, where you had a long-term dictator who never was legitimate from the perspective of a democratic uh, legitimacy, which incidentally is not the only type of... Uh, I don't place super great stock in that as the only form of, uh, of a sovereign legitimacy. Um, but if you're going to pretend to be a democracy, then you probably should be a democracy. And, uh, and Assad and his father never pretend, never 
acted uh, as democratic, uh, democratically elected leaders. They seized uh, power through force, or they kept power through force, um, and and so the uh, unlike something which you would actually consider a democracy, there never was a significant possibility of a transfer of power to an unexpected uh, place. So. I initially supported the rebels in Syria because it was a civil war. The, the borders of nations were not going to be redrawn, and there, there wasn't a larger power that was seeking to absorb uh, the, the territory of a nearby weaker power. Unfortunately, situa uh, the situation has gotten a lot worse in Syria because by not seeing a rapid transfer of power to uh, to a new leader or a rapid defeat of uh, of the uh, of the rebels, uh, the prolonged instability in the area has allowed for bands of militants that have long been a problem and have never enjoyed a, ma uh, a majority support. It's allowed them to uh, set up, I guess, the the skeleton of a state there. That, that claims territory across many nations and is destabilizing uh, the region. And we're seeing them wipe out ethnic minorities and do all sorts of nasty things. Um, lots of executions, not pleasant. Uh, but, uh, and so I, I think we're left in Syria without any particular uh, side that we would like to support since the the types of rebels that we ideally would have been comfortable seeing winning have generally been wiped out. And Assad's regime remains unacceptable, but I guess you sometimes have to choose the least bad alternative, and or, or you can just sit on your hands and, and weep. Uh, I'm not really sure what... Uh, if, if I were asked who should win or who would we lend force to at this point, uh, I really have no idea because we, we failed to actually get involved and support anybody, and none of the neighboring nations got involved either, leading to a power vacuum, leading to warlords, and uh, pretty much guaranteed terrible results no matter what in that area. Um, so that's those are my thoughts on that, which I, I guess I, I was... That was primarily why I wanted to record the video, just to clear up a seeming in inconsistency between uh, at least initially supporting rebels in Syria versus not supporting rebels in, in the Ukraine. <clears throat> um, so far, I'm, I'm still enjoying New York. The, the weather is certainly being nice. Uh, uh, somebody else that I, I knew who actually helped me move into New York is now about to move away, which is a bit of a bummer since it's... Uh, one fewer per, uh, person that I know in New York, and I'm not being—I'm not a particularly social person, so it's uh, having somebody else move away is always a bummer. Um, uh, not a lot else is planned. I'm going to Dragon Con in a few weeks, which should be interesting. Um, since I haven't been to a uh, a convention for quite a long time. And I've never been to one as big as Dragon Con before. This one's set in uh, Atlanta. And I mean, I've heard about Dragon Con many times. Uh, and there, there were some people who a long time ago used to convince, uh, used to try and convince me to go to it. Uh, I never decided. I never said yes. And uh, this time I'm actually going. But it turns out that I'm probably not going to bump into anybody that I know there, uh, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, uh, I guess there's not a lot else going on. Um, oh, I, yeah, I guess I I ended up replacing my Raspberry Pi with, uh, which was Model B, the 512 megabyte version of the Model B. I ended up replacing it with the Model B Plus from, uh, I, I bought it through Adafruit, and I bought a whole bunch of, uh, other components and ended up shipping my old one to an ex-girlfriend. Um, <clears throat> so the B plus, it's a little bit smaller, uh, has a has a number of other slight improvements. So it's 
it's it's pretty cool, and uh, I'm looking forward to teaching uh, teaching my classes with a bunch of these. Um, probably will have to order a bunch more and actually get the space, but I'm just about done revising my curriculum for some cl uh, classes that I really enjoyed teaching, and so getting back in that habit is is going to be good. Um, and I guess we're getting kind of near the end of the summer. It's uh, August 17th. So it's it's been been another interesting uh, interesting summer. I, I guess we're the the weather's going to start to get cold again, and that's going to be a pain in the butt. But it's it's nice to wear shorts for a little bit, uh, short sleeves. Um, I I did cut my hair recently. Uh, it actually doesn't look all that great in the back because I cut it with scissors and. I probably should get in the habit of actually going to a hairstylist, but I haven't really been, uh, been to one since I left Pittsburgh. I guess hairstylists, they, they, that tends to be kind of a personal choice, like what kind of place are you really comfortable with, who do you like actually having cut your hair, stuff like that, and uh, just being a little bit picky with that, because I've been a little bit reluctant to get back on the horse and figure out uh, figure out a place. Um, but I guess life goes on and it's important to, to not get afraid of exposing yourself, uh, getting exposed to new experiences. And that's something that I've been worried a little bit uh, about since at age 36, uh, I've, the, the tendency to, to ossify in one's habits, it's strong and it's not a good tendency. You, you get very boring and uh, things stop changing in your life unless you remember that things have to change and you can't just hang on to the things that you're comfortable with. So I, di I did end up ordering a, uh, a, a new kind of... Uh, I saw a kid with a skateboard. Oh, this is weird. Yeah, occasionally ants uh, crawl onto me and I'm not really sure from where. That's why I feel an itch and spot an ant on me. Um, anyhow, I saw a kid skate, uh, skate by on a skateboard that was actually two boards connected with the pipe. And it reminded me of when I was younger and skateboarding and stuff, and I started to feel old. And then I realized I can do that, or at least I hope I can do that. And I, I mean, I guess 36-year-old knees might not take to, to a fall quite as well as 10-year-old uh, as knees or 15-year-old knees. I don't really remember. I, I didn't skate for that long. But I snowboarded. Uh, I, I got into snowboarding for a while, a few years back, and it was fun. And it and the kid was moving on the on this board, like it was a uh, snowboard. Oh yeah, and, and so it looked like two parts of a skateboard connected by a pipe, and each of the parts could tilt like this. And so the kid was kind of going weaving back and forth like. Well, I'm probably not quite doing that right. It's it's more like that. So the kid was moving back and forth like that uh, on the uh, on the sidewalk, and it, it just it looked neat. Toward I, I did a little bit of research, found one that hopefully is going to be big enough for an adult, and uh, and ordered one. It'll probably be arriving sometime later this week or something. Uh, hopefully, I won't completely bust myself up learning to move on it, but I'm hoping it's fun. I hope I'm hoping I enjoy it, uh, and I'm also. Just, I'm gonna get my bike back into good condition and try to uh, try to bike around a little bit more because the the reason that I always used to or the reason that I stopped biking for for a while is that I had uh, I, I have a giant laptop an 18 inch laptop uh, really powerful great for computing but it I always worried about breaking it and I had a giant laptop bag to move around with it and ever since I moved to using a Chromebook a little bit more often, it's much lighter weight. And I'm using the uh, backpack, it's a proper backpack, that my current employer gave me. And uh, it's something which I actually could bike with. Uh, I could reasonably get around with it, and it makes sense to, uh, to try to do that. So I, I should be biking more. Um, I should be willing to explore things other than... Uh, other than taking the subway or busing. I mean, certainly I'm not gonna, I'm not likely to bike to work super often because it's a reasonably long way. Uh, all the way from uh, Ditmas Park in Brooklyn, all the way up 
to Times Square and Manhattan. Uh, that I might do that sometimes. Um, and it's great that there are showers at work, so I, I, I wouldn't have to worry about being stinky or something uh, for the whole work day. But uh, at least for casual getting around, I, I should get back in the habit of biking or, or trying this new uh, um, pipe boarding, I think it's called. Uh, the, the, uh, trying this uh, this uh, boarding thing. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, really hoping that I don't end up busting myself up too much, but it's, it'll be an adventure. And uh, and I guess that's that's one of the more important things. Since uh, also might help me meet people. Just I'm naturally kind of a shy person with strong opinions, certainly, but I just I, I don't tend to interact a lot with people I don't know. And it's uh, important to keep doing activities that get me out there and that might result in happenstance meetings that might lead to friendships or relationships or something like that. Um, so I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, uh, again, I'll, I'll try and uh, do do this, this kind of uh, video blogging thing a little bit more often. Uh, maybe not actually once a week, but uh, more often than once every few months. Uh, that's all. Uh, I welcome your comments. And if you are going to DragonCon, let me know, and maybe we'll hang out a little bit there. Uh, uh, take care.